Hello everyone, welcome to the KZJN News. Today we'll bring you news from the Indian Wells Valley Water District, Republican debate news, a St. Patrick's Day message from the Ridgecrest Police Department, Kern County meeting news, oh, and don't forget to change your clocks this weekend, today's gas prices, weather, sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Wendick. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. We open with a story from KZGN field reporter Tanya Pyle. Indian Wells Valley Water District Manager Don Zadiba released a report on the state of conservation and things are looking up. His report reveals the present conservation rate compared to former rates and clarifies the effects of production from consumption. Finally, Zadiba factors in outside effects including major construction in the valley, precipitation, as well as customer compliance to the new conservation rules and regulations. As for the conservation rate, we are now at a cumulative 24.2% since reporting started in June of 2015. Zadiba reported, although meter production at the wells was only slightly lower in comparison to February 2013, consumption was significantly lower. Zodiva clarified this by saying, consumption does not include water that went toward increasing reservoir storage or construction water. He identified a couple of large commercial projects that factor into the rate including Cerro Coastal and Walmart construction. As for the residential gallons per capita per day, Zodiva reported the present 79 compared to 84 last February. Zodiva attributed improvement was due largely to customer compliance with Ordinance 100 adopted January 11th. The ordinance restricts outdoor landscape irrigation to one day per week through February. Zodiva also factored in precipitation during the month, saying it had allowed irrigation systems to be turned off for a time. All things considered, things are looking up as the valley inches its way to meeting new conservation rates presently in place. It's important based on the consequences of not meeting rate requirements. KZGN will follow this progress closely and keep you informed. Thanks, Tanya, for this report. In Republican campaign news endorsements, Friday morning, former presidential candidate Ben Carson officially endorsed Trump for president. So he joins former candidate Chris Christie in endorsing Trump as well. Former candidate Carly Fiorina endorsed Cruz yesterday. Well, Thursday evening, there was yet another Republican debate. I think this was their 12th debate. There was much anticipation as to how this debate would go, in that many of the previous debates have been very raucous and degrading. Well, it appears the candidates heard the call for more civility and came through. They were much more polite to each other, and that was good to see. The debate was held in Miami, Florida, and hosted by CNN. Opening statements set the tone for the whole debate. The only one with a new opening statement was Trump. His opening statement declared that millions of new voters are coming to the Republican Party, that this campaign has caused a new excitement for the people to vote again. And he made the call for the party to acknowledge the new voters, to embrace them and welcome them to the party, and for the establishment to rally together now and support whoever gets the most delegates to be the nominee. The questions posed were good questions. While there were a few questions to try and start a battle between the candidates, the only one that seemed willing to do some serious criticism was Cruz. Ruby was back to his good debater style. Most believe that is too late for him, though. His decision a couple weeks ago to go attack Trump seems to have badly backfired. Kasich was his normal polite candidate. He did show a little more excitement in his style for his debate, though. He was very articulate in his answers, but many of the questions were designed to challenge Trump on his positions. Even when they weren't asking Trump a question, often they posed a question to another candidate asking them if they say anything wrong with Trump's position. So I would bet at least 60% of the questions had some reference to Trump. As far as the questions, a lot of time was spent discussing Trump's main platform that the U.S. has very bad deals with other trade partners and that many of the trade deals are not fair to the U.S. and our workers. Trump's position is that these trade deals need to be renegotiated to help incentivize companies to stay in America or come back to America. Two very important causes. He believes employing more people here will create a new, more favorable financial basis for the government to better operate. Generally, the other candidates agree with him, but Cruz wanted more details of Trump's plan. 
Trump insists it's all about negotiations. And it really is. You can't predict how a new trade deal will be negotiated in the future. Rubio really played to the Miami crowd, trying to save his campaign. At one point, Rubio was asked to acknowledge climate change as a problem. Rubio refused to accept it as a certainty that it's just a U.S. problem. He said any new policies being recommended by Washington climate change advocates will do nothing to do what they want. Then unless the rest of the world, like China and India, enact the same restrictions, no impact will be achieved. Kasich was the only other one asked to accept climate change theory, and he also refused to accept it as a new direction in laws. Cruz and Trump were not asked about climate change. They were all as point blank on their positions that the president should listen to the military commanders on how to defeat ISIS. The question posed was, if military commanders requested boots on the ground to defeat ISIS, would they follow the commander's recommendation? They all answered yes, they would follow the recommendation. Trump was the most in fact, though, stating that he would provide the troops, give them full support to overwhelm the enemy, defeat them, and bring the troops right back home. Cruz tried to diminish Trump as not an outsider, but an insider to Washington and Wall Street. Trump gave a great answer to that charge. He said, yes, he was an insider. So no one else knows how the insiders work better than him. As he has now crossed over to make America great again, he knows where the problems are and knows how to fix them. He is not there to help make Wall Street richer. He is there to help the middle class be important again. Anyway, that's a quick overview of the two hours of debate. It was very substantial, and it was very polite. Now stay with us for news from the Ridgecrest Police Department when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. In news from the Ridgecrest Police Department, they're asking everyone to keep the streets safe on this St. Patrick's Day. Don't drink and drive. As one of the country's most popular holidays, St. Patrick's Day has long celebrated the roots of 34.2 million Americans with Irish ancestry, and many more who just want to partake in the festivities. This year, if you're drinking alcohol, remember, buzz driving is drunk driving. Tragically, March 17th has become one of the nation's deadliest holidays. In fact, from 2010 to 2014, almost three-fourths of the drunk driving fatalities during this holiday period involving drivers who had BACs well above the limit of 0.08. With 266 drunk driving fatalities total nationwide, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. To help lower deaths and injuries, Ridgecrest police officers are always on the lookout for impaired drivers. They will be targeting problem areas with high numbers of DUI collisions and DUI arrests. Routine nightly patrols will be looking for the telltale signs of impaired driving to include weaving, crossing the center line, etc. And keep an eye out for pedestrians who have had too much to drink. Walking while intoxicated can also be deadly, as lack of attention could put you at risk of getting hit by a vehicle. So whether you've indulged a little or a lot, law enforcement wants to remind everyone to drink and drive is a crime, to put yourself at risk as well as others. The consequences are often fatal. Use this party planning checklist to stay safe this St. Patrick's Day. Party preparation? Designate a sober, reliable driver to get you home safely. Find the name of a taxi company or two and keep their numbers in your phone. Or download the California Office of Traffic Safety Designated Driver VIP mobile app. It is now available for free download on iOS and Android devices. Launched in 2014, the app offers enhanced features, allowing users to map a spot with their current location to find partnering establishments in their area or a list of spots to search all participating bars and restaurants throughout California. Users will be offered free incentives at each bar to celebrate their life-saving role. They can stay up to date and see what other users are seeing via its social tab. Also through the app, for those who want to imbibe but also make it a point to plan ahead, users can easily order a sober ride from Uber, Lyft, or Curb, all from one screen. On St. Patrick's Day, before you take your first sip of green beer, leave your keys at home or give them to a friend. Ensure your designated driver has committed to a sober evening. If you're the designated driver, do not drink. Your friends are relying on you, 
as are the people with whom you share the road. Enjoy non-alcoholic beverages and tweet your VIP status online using the hashtag designated driver. Commit to driving sober Patrick's Day and every day. Oh yeah. Okay. Commit to driving sober St. Patrick's Day and every day. Always keep the number of taxi company in your phone or in your wallet so you have a backup plan if you find yourself in need of a sober driver. Last, if you're impaired, don't let pride get in the way of calling a sober friend or family member to get you home safely. Help spread the word about the dangers of drunk driving or buzz driving and the resources available to keep the streets safe. Recent statistics reveal that 30% of drivers in fatal crashes had one or more drugs in their systems. A study of active drivers showed more tested positive for drugs than may impair driving than did for alcohol. Of the drugs, marijuana was the most prevalent at 7.4%, slightly more than alcohol. Everyone should be mindful that if you're taking medication, whether prescription or over-the-counter, drinking even small amounts of alcohol can greatly intensify the impairment effects. Remember, driving after drinking or impaired by drugs should never be an option. This enforcement campaign is funded by a grant from the California Office of Traffic Safety through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Now some Kern County Supervisors meeting news. I want to report the KZGN TV broadcast of the Supervisors meeting last Tuesday morning live for the first time. This was the first time people here in the Valley have been able to see the Supervisors meeting live over the air and on Mediacom cable. The only other way to see their meetings was online or at the Kern County offices on China Lake Boulevard. Anyway, the supervisors have the desire to increase their transparency. So we here at KSGN were approached by the Kern County media staff to carry the meetings. We agreed to do that. They have helped us set up the necessary equipment to broadcast it here. So our plan is to broadcast their meetings live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. So tell your friends and neighbors, KSGN TV at Ridgecrest is now carrying the Board of Supervisors meeting every Tuesday morning. KZN is live over the air on channels 21.1, 21.2, and 21.3. KZN TV is also on Mediacom cable channels 21, 322, 323, and 521. And KZN is the place to see the live Kern County Supervisor regular meetings every Tuesday morning that they have a meeting. Now on to the next big election next Tuesday. The states up for grab are winner-take-all delegates for the first time. States holding primaries are Florida, Ohio, Missouri, Illinois, and North Carolina. Florida and Ohio are must-win states for Rubio and Kasich. If they don't win their home states, they are virtually out of the race. And current polls show Trump leading by a large margin over Rubio in Florida. Currently, the polls give Trump about a 16 to 23 point lead there. In Ohio, Trump is showing a smaller margin. His polls only give him about a six point lead over Kasich. So Ohio is much closer in race but we have all witnessed that the polls can be real wrong, as evidenced in Sanders' win over Clinton in Michigan last Tuesday. That point was way off. In news from the Ridgecrest Regional Hospital, we get news of upcoming health fair. The health fair is set to be this Saturday, March 12th. It will run from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. It will be at the Kermagee Center here in Ridgecrest. Entrance is free. If you want to get medical screenings, they will be available for $35. People are asked to call 760-499-3825 now to make an appointment and get fasting instructions before the event. There will be a $5 lunch available. There will also be activities for the kids as well. Remember, if you want to participate in the screenings, call now and make an appointment and get fasting instructions. Now in case of continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's gas prices for Ridgecrest and some surrounding areas. Well, since my last report on Wednesday, local prices are again creeping up. However, we still have the lowest prices in all the areas we are monitoring. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is ranging from 219 to 299 per gallon, Lancaster from 245 to 289, the LA Valley area 233 to 267, and the Bishop area 260 to 279. We only have one station at the 219 per gallon. The next lowest is 223 per gallon. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Now stay with us. After the break, we'll have weather and sports.
Thanks for staying with us. Now here's Lane with the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, heavy rainfall will continue to produce dangerous flash flooding over portions of the Gulf Coast states through Saturday. Further west, flash flooding will be possible over portions of California as a series of Pacific cold fronts move through the area over the next several days. Temperatures across the nation. Carolina's at 69, Georgia at 76, Arkansas at 54, Northern Texas at 68, Arizona at 77, and Los Angeles at 64. And for us locally, tonight, a 40% chance of showers, mostly cloudy with low around 45, southwest wind 15 to 20 miles per hour with gusts as high as 35. Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 68, southwest wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Saturday night, partly cloudy with a low around 47, south-southwest wind 15 miles per hour with gusts as high as 20. Sunday, partly sunny with a high near 68, west-southwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Sunday night, a 20% chance of showers, mostly cloudy with a low around 49, West-southwest wind, 20 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 35. Monday, a 30% chance of showers, partly sunny with a high near 68. West wind, 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Monday night, partly cloudy with a low around 46. West wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 20. And Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high near 67. West wind, 5 miles per hour. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom. Thanks, Lane. And now here's Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Friday early evening to everyone. Let's talk about Saracoso baseball. They get their third win in conference yesterday in the Foothill Conference. They defeat Victor Valley College by a score of 11-3. to Coso now 10 wins on the season. They have five losses. They're currently three wins and two losses in the conference. They'll play Barstow on Saturday night. That game will be at 6 o'clock up the hill. Come on out. Bring out a blanket. Put it out there. Great place to watch baseball. Weather should be okay Saturday night. A little bit of wind, but otherwise bring a bring a light jacket. Should be a nice night. If you can't get out, you can tune in to 1240 AM. We'll have it for you there on KLOA. Also along SaracosoBaseball.club, the internet. All right, NBA last night, the Cavaliers beat the Lakers, Spurs over the Bulls. Boy, the Spurs right now might be the hottest team in all of basketball. The Raptors beat the Hawks and Denver over the Suns. The Suns have to be the worst team right now in the NBA, probably worse than the Lakers, and maybe arguably as bad as the 76ers. They are the most disappointing team to me in the NBA this year. Maybe... Washington would uh, be on that same plane for disappointment, but boy, oh boy, I thought much better things. Jeff Hornacek, the coach, was fired about a month and a half ago for Phoenix. Okay, let's talk about NCAA basketball playoffs. If you're a basketball fan, March Madness coming right up around the corner here. They're going to have the draw on Sunday. They'll announce the pairing Sunday night. Should be very interesting to see what's going to happen this year. It's open, I think, for anyone to win the big dance. ACC tournament last night, Notre Dame beats Pittsburgh. Also, Duke loses in overtime to Notre Dame. Now, Duke just barely won the other night against North Carolina State, and Duke is out. Duke will be in the NCAA tournament. Look for them to be probably maybe a 6 or 7 seed. They won't be one of the top seeds this year. Virginia beats Georgia Tech, and Miami over Virginia Tech. Miami and Virginia, both very good teams. Okay, Big 12 last night. Kansas gets a win. West Virginia does so, along with Oklahoma. Oklahoma beats Iowa State. Pac-12, Oregon a winner. They beat Washington, Arizona over Colorado. Utah beats USC 80-72. It was a three-point game with about a minute left. Utah pulls away at the end. And Cal gets by Oregon State. Big East, let's talk about Xavier. They win again. They have a chance to get a two-seed in the tournament. Providence wins out in the Big West. UC Santa Barbara gets a win. Hawaii beats Cal State Fullerton. And UCI beats Cal Poly in the late game last night. Long Beach State defeats UC Riverside. Let's talk about what happened in the Big Ten. The upset of the night, maybe of the day, I think. Nebraska beats Wisconsin. Wisconsin was the third seed. Nebraska was the number nine seed. Nebraska's still alive. 
All right, let's talk about, um, again, Coastal Baseball. Saturday night, 6 o'clock, huge game against Barstow. The Barstow coach, Brian King, former COSO assistant. And put this on your calendar. Saturday night, May 7th, there'll be an event right here. It's a community sports dinner. We're going to honor teams from the community, from the from fifth grade basketball all the way through high school that have done very well this past season, along with the alumni of the year. That'll be Brian Christensen, who played for Dick Adams baseball back in the late uh, late eight 90s and was probably one of the top players that ever played here, was drafted, played professionally, and that'll be a very great evening. Hope you can come out. If you want information, you can call 384-6384. Again, Saturday night, May 7th. That's our annual spring dinner. This year it was uh, moved back about a month. Traditionally, it's been at the end of March. That's your sports on this Friday, early evening. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. All of the KGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KGN TV, Richcrest's only locally owned community TV station. And remember, Saturday night, move your clocks ahead one hour. It's time to go back to standard time. So move your clocks one hour up as you go to bed Saturday night. Now stay tuned for Richcrest Talk coming up next.